like a nuts. And we're going to be talking about kidding and kidding prep as well as newborn care today and our goat series. So Jewel here is getting really, really close. We are less than a week away from her delivery. And so some of the things that we have to do to get them ready in the last week is, is that we actually will deworm them every day. Because in the last week, up until, you know, even a couple days after they deliver, the goats can develop a huge influx of worms during that time. Because of the stress of delivery and everything, the worms will, all the worm eggs basically almost explode at one time. And so what we do is that we will start deworming them a week prior to their delivery. I've already given her her stuff this morning. I've showed y'all countless times how I've done that. So I'm not going to show you again today. But she definitely was not happy about it. Now I don't give the quantity that I normally would if I was only deworming her once a week. It is reduced down a little bit because we're giving it every day for a full week. We also make sure that she's getting more calcium and more iron in her diet. And then we usually do the calcium through doing the CMPK and then with the iron, just giving her molasses. And we will mix it on her feed and it just kind of helps with the last little bit of the trimester, helping them be able to poop well and to have the extra nutrients that they need. So Jill's been pretty upset with me today about everything that I have been giving her and other things that we have had to do. So something that we do also is that we have to shave them. So we shave their rear ends and down onto their udder. And that just makes sure that everything is cleaner back there. It's gonna make when they do get ready to kid that it will be a lot easier and a lot cleaner. She was not happy. Um, we did not record it just because I had to have extra hands and there really wasn't a good position to put the camera to be able to, to record it. But I will show y'all what it looks like as well. Now, there is going to be a lot of goat butt images on this video today. So if you don't want to see a goat butt, click away and go watch some of our other videos. I'm going to try to get her to be cooperative with me. She's not very happy, like I said. It's okay. It's okay, Jill. It's okay, sweetie. It's okay. Alright. I'm going to see what else I could do here. I may have to flip the camera around and just talk to y'all. Because she's not going to let me pull her over. Alright, so you can see that her udder is well trimmed. Not as trimmed as I would like it to be, but you could actually see it pretty good. And then as we go up, we trimmed up further up right in here. And then we even trimmed all the fur pretty well off the underneath side of her tail. She's not going to let me touch her tail right now. But... And then we also did a little bit kind of underneath here so that we could get a better view of the udders. And so that the babies themselves could be able to find the teats and stuff. So we just do all of that trimming just to make sure that when she does kid that the mess is not going to be as bad and that also that we can keep an eye on her udders because as her udders develop more over this next week we will know when she's actually going to be kidding. So there's a lot of things that we do with our does during the last you know few weeks that they don't exactly agree with, you know, and so shaving them is one of them. And then they also milk stand training because we want to be able to milk her. The lady we had gotten her from never did milk her. And so we have been working some with her, but we just didn't want to stress her out too much over her pregnancy. Now that she's in the latter part, I'm going to show you a little bit what we do on one of the steps, but she's not going to like it and she's going to be kicking and she's going to be pretty upset. It's going to look kind of violent a little bit. And all I'm going to be doing is basically just putting my hand and holding her udder, getting her used to the feel of me messing with them. And she gets pretty crazy about it. So I will start by just kind of petting her, getting her used to me petting her, you know, 
And then I put my hand on her belly. See how she's already starting to kick because she knows what I'm fixing to do. And then I just, I just grab her arm. And I just hold it. That's all I do. I just hold it. I don't really do much anything. Sometimes I might move my hand a little bit. But just trying to get her used to me touching her arm. She's getting a little better about it. Now, we do this to kind of help get her ready for being milked and being used to this. And then just in case, you know, that something was to happen to the babies, that we have to nurse, we have to bottle feed them. We need to be able to milk her too at that point. You see, she's, she's getting used to this a little bit. You just have to be more stubborn than the goat really is. That's how I kind of in my hand a little bit. See, since I'm in my hand, she, she starts dancing. And we only do this like once a day for just a few minutes. We don't do it very long because I don't want to overstress her at this point. Okay. No. I gotta wait till she's calms down. Okay, she's calm and now I'll move my hand. She gets pretty upset about that. Tilly wasn't as bad. Tilly actually was a lot better. And we have already been training the little girls, a gizmo and eclipse, so that they won't be like this. Now, something else that we have to do, and we do this every day, is that we check her ligaments. So the ligaments run on both sides right here beside her tail. I will put a little image up so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And, you know, I will just pet her on her back for a little bit, you know, especially now that I've kind of upset her. And just run my hands down, and they're almost like what you would think, like Laffy Taffy. Some people refer them to them as straws. And you just try to find them down in there. And as long as you can feel them, like I can feel hers pretty good, they're squishy, then she's not going to deliver yet. It's usually when you can't feel them, that they're pretty much completely gone, that it could be, you know, up to 12 hours, maybe a little bit longer. Some even times, even up to 18 hours before they're going to deliver. But, I mean, hers are there, they're just squishy. I've noticed she's already starting to get pretty hollow on either side and that's a good indication that they're getting closer to. You also see when like when the babies drop they'll get kind of really squishy right here on their sides and she's already been like that for a few days and it's just the babies dropping moving in position and you'll also see sometimes like this side so it is left side lunch right side rugrats and when you see this side kind of change shape a little bit Especially if it stays there, you know that the babies are, are moving into position. And I've noticed the last couple of days that, you know, she does look smaller on this side. So I'm hoping she makes it to her due date, but we'll see. Here, I'll show you a better view of, of what her rear end looks like. And it has the itch. Just pet her, buddy. Something else that we do is we definitely make sure that our does are getting enough exercise. If they're not out in the big yard with everybody else, because like we've already sucked, we've already separated her from the others, is that we just let her out into our yard, you know, a couple times a day, walk around with her, you know, make sure sure she's getting some exercise because that's very something that's very important when they're pregnant. Am I annoying you? Something else you could tell like when they're getting closer is they get this little, see how jiggly it is back here? We kind of call that the jiggly butt syndrome around here. And then also something that I do regularly, not everybody does this, but is that I will take pictures of her udder literally every single day. And then we compare them to the day before just to see what they look like. So this was yesterday and then this is today's picture. So I don't see much change in the udder from yesterday to today, but we just keep doing this and we keep looking back to see when that there is that pop. A lot of breeders will call it the pop. And it's usually pretty close when you see that, when they kind of swell up and get ready. So after doing all that, making sure she has her vitamins, that she is shaved, that she's getting her dewormer every day, 
that she's getting her nutrition. She's got plenty of water. You know, it's pretty much we're just in the waiting game. We're on baby watch at this point. All right, now that I'm done harassing her, I'm going to take y'all in and show y'all my kitten kit. So what is a kitten kit? So a kitten kit is basically is just your supplies that you're going to need during kitting time or when your does are giving birth. All right, so we're going to show you what's in mine here. So I talked about this book and the breeding and pregnancy care. So I wanted to show y'all is a section on kitting. So they actually break it down like what the steps of kidding are or the stages. And then to actually show kidding in process. And then also how the kids could be inside mom. You know, because there is all different ways that they can be tangled up in there. And you might have to go in and untangle them. I had to do that with Tilly. All three of hers were just all messed up. I had to go in each time and help her have them. Yeah, so this is my kitting kit. It's just in a plastic tub. All right, so one of the first things that I have on top here is just old towels. And so when the babies are born, you know, if you're present and you're able to help, you can either have the, you know, have the dough deliver on towels or puppy pads. We have found puppy pads have been the best thing because once the dough delivers onto the puppy pad, you get the baby cleaned up. You know, I usually will use a towel to like clean the face and stuff off. Then you can toss these. It's so awesome to have these. Yeah, you know, and once the babies are born, I like to use this little aspirator to help suck out the, you know, the gunk, the ambiotic fluid in their lungs. Sometimes you have to get it out of their nose. Mostly it's just out of the lungs. And I actually have two of these. I have, I have boiled these up really well. And then I actually held some deals, some squeeze deals on it to help keep, you know, get all the moisture out of there. So say you have to go in, you know, you're going to need gloves. I just have just the disposable gloves for just helping. But then if I have to go in, I actually have some of these. So these are like the actual birthing gloves that what like a vet would use like they go all the way up your shoulders and i like i said i had to go in with tilly and these were nice to use because i didn't have to worry about the fact that i might lose one of these up in her which would not be good so some of the other things that i keep in my kitty kit is i do keep the cmpk in there just in case i need to give her a boost like say she's really lagging this will help her uterus to kind of tone up and get going a little bit better. Of course, we keep our selenium in there. And some colostrum gel. My colostrum gel is a little dried up, so I'm going to have to see if I can add a little water to it. But if mom is not producing any colostrum or her milk hasn't come in, this is a lifesaver because kids need the colostrum with an hour of birth. Either you milking it out and giving it to them either in a bottle or having to tube feed them or you hooking them up to mom and letting her feed them that way. So I also have cotton balls and cotton swabs in here. And the cotton balls are mostly in case like I have to give mom a shot. So I do keep needles and syringes in here too. Because I very rarely do you have to give a baby a shot. Um, I also keep my vitamin B complex in here. I also keep Jumpstart and I talked about this in the breeding video but this just helps mom if she is struggling to. It has probiotics. It also has B vitamins in it and it just get it gives her a jump start. It helps keep her going and you can give it to babies too if you need to. Like if they're really weak or struggling and that's what also the drench is used for. This is the drench I had spoke about earlier that this is just for goats. I mean, I think you can get for sheep too. No, this has goats on it. This is just for goats. And you just give them a little bit of this and it helps jumpstart them as well. Helps keep mom going, you know, and you can even give the jumpstart and the, the drench during the latter part of pregnancy if they're really struggling. I have electrolytes and I can give this to the babies and to mom 
Usually after she has her babies, I will mix in just a little bit of electrolytes and some warm molasses water. And that really just boosts mom. It gives her a boost of energy and just helps her to, to get through the next 24 hours. I keep iodine and this is for dipping the cords in. So I will use just a little cap like this and we will pour it in. Dip the cords in them for the babies. I also keep a cayenne tincture in here. And so this is how used for kind of warming the dough. You can warm the babies. You can rub it on their gums. It's also really good if your dough is bleeding excessively. Cayenne is really good for that. And then like I've talked about, if you have to go in, you're going to want a good lube. We just got this one just a tractor supply. And it just helps you, you know, basically you're not going in dry, <laughs> you know. I also like to keep a little bit of pain mint. So we just keep some meloxicam. And I will crush it up and give it a little bit of water. And we can use like one of the syringes to give it to her. Especially if she is really, you can tell that she's in pain afterwards. Some will give uh, Bamamine. Bamamine is a little harder to come by than Meloxicam is. I have my feeding tube. This one got a little bit of gunk on it. It's just the, um, the iodine. That's all it is. But it's still sealed. And there are videos online showing you how to use these. I had to use these, one of these with Miracle, one of Kelly's little girls. And then just keeping a good pair of medical scissors that you, way you can, if you have to cut the cords. And then you want to use some dental floss to make sure that you tie them off. We haven't ever really had to do this really, really much with them. And just keeping a trash bag in there to clean up the mess because you're going to have a mess and a thermometer. That way you can keep an eye on mama and baby's temperatures as needed. So as far as for newborn care, you just want to make sure that, that you do dip their cords. That just keeps bacteria from going up in there and causing some lot of problems and potentially losing your little babies. We usually don't give like any shots or anything unless something is needed. A lot of times it's just making sure that mom has fed them and that they have that colostrum within the first hour. And then, you know, we, if mom is raising them, which would be dam raising, we just weigh them every day. We make sure that they are gaining weight. And then if we're bottle feeding, we will weigh every day. And usually they won't start eating like any feed or hay until they're like three weeks of age. So it's pretty much from birth till about three weeks that you just, they're just having milk. You just make sure they have adequate milk. And now one thing is that you don't want to overfeed them. You can cause what they call floppy kid syndrome and you could lose them. You know, you feed based on weight. And I could list a little chart of how much that you want to give, you know, ounce per body weight there. Well, thanks for watching. I hope that y'all gained something from this. And if you have any questions or comments, please drop them below. You're quirky nuts. And we hope to have kids hitting the ground soon. Bye. Bye.